Leading, Delegating, and Collaborating, Chapter 16. The accomplishment of organizational goals and outcomes is contingent on the actions of leaders whose influence and interaction encourage coworkers and patients towards their goals. Managers who are responsible for guidance and direction, and followers who collaboration and action are a vital part of the outcome process. As John Quincy Adams once said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. After this lesson, the student will have met Course Objective 6 and the following lesson objectives. To define leadership. Describe leadership role in nursing, compare leadership styles, analyze own leadership style, delegate according to professional principles, collaborate as part of the healthcare team, describe accountability that's embedded in leadership, describe role of the advocate, and analyze strategies for conflict management. First, we're going to define leaders. Leaders influence patients, families, and others towards a vision or a goal. They empower others. They communicate a sense of direction and demonstrate self-confidence. Characteristics of a leader are competence, trustworthiness, self-assuredness, decision-making ability, and prioritizing skills. The tasks of leadership include envisioning goals, affirming values, motivating others, managing, achieving workable unity, developing trust, explaining, serving as a symbol, representing the group, and renewing the self. Now let's look at a brief overview of managers. When you take a look at management, they provide the structure and direction necessary to accomplish goals and outcomes that are known and where there is a system in place to achieve the outcomes. Managers are any staff member who bears responsibility for the work of others. It's anyone who must ensure the completion of an organizational process. And it's one who guides the processes necessary to accomplish tasks necessary to achieve organizational outcomes. Then we have followers. Followership, not a passive process, it uses personal behaviors that contribute to the healthcare team's goals. They demonstrate, collaborate, influence, and action with the leader or manager to accomplish goals and outcomes. They should be willing to question, debate, compromise, collaborate, and act as well as be accountable for those actions. Leadership is a preferred method, so we're going to discuss leadership in detail. Remember, leadership is a strong leader that assesses the traits of the team and directs them in a way that is the most beneficial to the care of the patient and the morale of the team. They have the ability to influence outcomes through positive interactions with team members. Let's discuss the characteristics again. They are able to recognize the strengths and weaknesses within the team. They manage them to affect a positive outcome from a plan of care. It empowers all team members to do the jobs of which they are most capable, and they delegate assignments, tasks, and duties to the best individuals for the particular job. Now I want to define the leadership role. A strong leader has clinical expertise, team members respect them, and they have critical thinking skills. A wise leader delegates tasks to the best individual team member and trusts him or her to complete the task correctly and efficiently. Managing is directing or supervising others as a means to control a situation. Managing patient care is overseeing the plan of care and directing others to implement the plan toward achievement of the desired outcomes. A manager has leadership qualities, acts as an advisor, and influences the beliefs of others. Continuing to define the leadership role, there is the both an expectation and an earned role. It's decisiveness, sound judgment, and the ability to articulate fluently. They have self-knowledge, respect, trust, integrity, vision, participation, learning, communication, and catalyzing change. 
attributes. And then they have the display of integrity. There are different leadership styles. Depending on team composition and dynamics and desired patient outcome, an RN's leadership style may differ substantially depending on the situation. The democratic leader. They base decisions on consensus, mutual agreement. They delegate duties according to the strengths within the team. The autocratic style, also called authoritarian. They use power to influence others and affect outcomes. There is the laissez-faire style. This is non-directive, deliberately intervenes as little as possible. Leadership approaches include uh, the changes influenced through empowerment of the nurse and team members. The approach depends on the personalities of the team and situation. The RN incorporates one or more styles of leadership to meet the needs of the patient. There is open communication that is needed among group members. Clear goals and objectives must be part of the plan of care, and each member must understand his or her role in meeting the goals. Then we have the transactional leadership. This is a traditional boss whose decisions are made without staff input. Motivates followers in three ways. They offer rewards, they monitor work performance and correct the staff member immediately, and they wait until a problem occurs and deals with it later. They rely on power and authority to reward or punish performance, and they are usually found in stable work environments. Then we have the transformational leadership. They seek and welcome input from staff. They bring out the best in people. They identify common values, is committed, is visionary, examines outcomes, and empowers others. They are charismatic, inspirational, motivational, and intellectually stimulating, and treat others as unique individuals. They motivate followers to reach fullest potential. They support creativity, uniqueness in problem solving, and an individual spirit of freedom. Then we have the servant leadership. They emphasize service to others, including employees, customers, and the community as a first priority. They focus on the needs of others. They empathize with them and is attentive to the concerns of followers. They involve listening, empathy, healing, persuasion, awareness, foresight, conceptualization, commitment to the growth of people, stewardship, and building community. So let's look at leadership style practice question one. A nurse is the team leader of a group. There's a problem with the patient and the nurse asks the team members for their input and waits until the group comes to an agreement. Which leadership style is this nurse using? Is it democratic? autocratic, laissez-faire, or transactional. Have you decided on an answer? It is one, democratic. The democratic leader bases decisions on consensus or mutual agreement within the group. The leadership approach of the RN can affect team satisfaction and patient outcome. Transactional leadership is authoritative and power-based. Transformational leadership encourages positive change and supports individuality. And servant leadership fosters service to others and positive interaction among healthcare staff. Let's discuss leadership and emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is caring for people in an empathetic way developing therapeutic relationships with patients and team members, and recognizing, acknowledging, and managing emotions in order to interact positively with others. There are four major domains. There is self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship management. This refers to recognizing and regulating emotions in ourselves and others. We can improve staff relationships, improve patient outcomes, motivate others, resolve conflict, and create a healthy work environment. Now when you talk about ethics and leadership, ethical decision making is a crucial part of the RN's role as a leader. 
Norhouse's five principles of ethical leadership should be considered when an RN is faced with an ethical issue or dilemma. Leadership has a moral or ethical dimension. There are five principles of ethical leadership. Serving others, showing justice, respecting others, honesty, building community. Leaders' ethical responsibilities include to treat followers with dignity and respect and be sensitive to their interests, needs, and concerns. Now let's review culture and leadership. Considering the cultural differences of the healthcare team, it is necessary in order to form a cohesive working relationship. Generational issues may be the hardest to overcome because of the differences in work habits, attitudes, and beliefs. Cultural competence extends to workplace as well. There are four generations in the workforce. We have the veterans. They value loyalty, respect authority, and want reward for hard work. We have the baby boomers. They view future with optimism and promise and desire to proper financially and contribute meaningfully. We have Generation X. They are loyal to the profession but unwilling to sacrifice for employer. Then we have the millennials. They are open-minded, collaborating, and civic-minded. Now let's discuss delegation. Delegation requires the RN to know state regulations and scope of practice for those under his or her authority. Definitions include assigning tasks or duties to an entrusted individual, getting work done through others, and directing the performance of one or more people to accomplish organizational goals. Principles of delegation include that delegation is a delicate process that must be clearly and rationally considered. Among the issues that must be addressed are the conditions of the patient, the skills of the team members, the appropriateness of the task, proper communication, and sufficient resources. DRN should follow the five rights of delegation to ensure proper assignment. Remember, the RN takes responsibility and accountability for the positions of the nursing practice. The RN directs care and determines the appropriate utilization of any assistant involved in providing direct patient care. So we look at assessment, planning, evaluation, and nursing judgment cannot be delegated. The decision of whether or not to delegate or assign is based on the RN's judgment. The RN delegates only those tasks that the healthcare worker has the knowledge and the skill to perform. The RN delegates the right task under the right circumstances to the right person with the right direction and communication and with the right supervision. There are issues in delegation. RNs cannot delegate, like we said before, nursing assessments, determination of diagnosis, and interventions requiring professional skill. A fair delegation process takes into account tasks already assigned, scope of practice, and experience. Trust, deadlines, and proper supervision will foster confidence in those to whom tasks have been delegated. Patient safety must always be maintained by understanding the scope of practice and the skills and abilities of the other healthcare team members. Delegating fairly does not mean delegating equally. According to the ANA, three elements may not be delegated. Remember, we discussed some of these earlier. The initial and subsequent nursing assessments that require professional judgment. Determination of nursing diagnosis, goals, plans of care, and progress. And interventions that require the application of professional knowledge and skills. If a person resists, provide deadlines, avoid over-supervising, First, assess the reason for the resistance or refusal to perform a specific task. Then take appropriate action to remedy the situation. Remember that if the patient has not been assessed by an RN, delegation should not occur. Now let's discuss collaboration. This is an agreement on the plan of care, communication among team members, mutual respect, skill recognition, and accountability must all be present to have collaborative health care. The definition is partnership arrangement between two or more individuals who have a mutual agreement to work together. Successful collaboration includes that the team must agree on the plan of care and the prioritization of the components of the plan, 
have excellent communication among the team members, and mutual recognition and respect. Accountability is where the RN is accountable for making sure the patient plan of care is followed by all members of the healthcare team within their scope of practice and with consideration of standards of practice and institutional policies. The RN must ensure that the plan of care is implemented, evaluated, and possibly modified so that the patient outcomes are the best that they possibly can be. Professional advocacy. The RN must advocate for the patient by promoting the patient's decisions, communicating these decisions to the healthcare team, and developing a plan of care to meet the patient's needs. Advocacy. One individual promotes someone else or someone's ideas. As a patient advocate, the RN promotes the patient's decisions in a non-judgmental manner. The RN's responsibilities include to assess the patient's understanding of the plan of care and ensure that the patient has all the information needed to make informed decisions. They must be caring. They have a commitment to preserving the patient's humanity, personal worth, and dignity. They need to speak up concerning unsafe conditions because patient safety is paramount. They need to advocate for the public and the nursing profession. Involvement with professional organizations and becoming an active in legal issues concerning health care policy is a key component. And they must be able to extend advocacy to themselves. So collaborating and advocating through the medical plan of care, uh, working in collaboration with all members of the health care team, the RN should communicate effectively with the physician in charge of the medical plan of care, anticipate the information the physician will need to make informed medical decisions, assess the patient's reaction to treatments, and coordinate with the lab while keeping the patient's needs the top priority. The physician is the manager of the medical plan of care. The RN must anticipate the medical direction, understand the orders written, and foresee how they will affect the patient and patient care. The RN must also understand the complexities of patient care management in order to advocate for the patient. Decision making and problem solving. Values, preferences, and experiences greatly impact decision making and following specific steps or a decision making model can aid in making a sound decision. So during decision making, it involves making the decision that's focused on trying to solve an immediate problem. Problem solving is a purposeful and goal-directed process that is aimed at identifying and selecting options as part of a problem solving, plan change, or improvement. So the decision making process is defining objectives, identifying options, identifying the advantages and disadvantages of each option, selecting an option, implementing the option, and evaluating the result. Effective decision-making and problem-solving process includes gathering data from many sources, learn different approaches to problem situations, observe positive role models in action, talk to a colleague or a superior who is an effective problem-solver and decision-maker, perform research to increase your knowledge base, and take risk using new approaches to problem solving. Then we have conflict management. Conflicts can occur within or between people or groups and may affect patient care. Conflict discussion should be conducted away from the patient area and should focus on patient care and safety. So conflict, this is an opposition of feelings, beliefs, desires, or goals. Types are Interpersonal, that's within one individual. Interpersonal, that's between or among two or more individuals. Intragroup, that's within one group. And intergroup, and that's between or among two or more groups. So remember the guidelines. You need privacy and you're willing to talk calmly and rationally. If not, stop the process and discuss at another time. Ask for help if it is needed. Think about sacrifice resolution. Sacrifice resolution involves compromise by one or both parties that can cause resentment. Someone accommodates the other by essentially sacrificing his or her position, thus allowing the other to have his or her way. Then we have competition resolution. It also causes resentment. Competition resolution pits team members against each other when they should be working with each other. 
one or both of the parties work competitively instead of cooperatively towards the resolution. One side wins and the other loses. Then we have the win-win resolution, allowing the parties to come together with a mutual goal and work towards reaching that goal with an open mind will create a win-win resolution. Team members need to always consider patient care as their first and ultimate priority. It's a collaborative method. There are two opposing parties coming together to decide on mutual goals. It's, uh, they design interventions to meet these goals and they work together to evaluate the outcomes. So let's look at conflict management practice question number two. A nurse has a conflict with another nurse. The nurse meets with the other nurse and resolves the conflict. Which type of conflict occurred? Intrapersonal, intergroup, interpersonal, or intrapsychic? Have you come up with an answer? Number three, interpersonal. This is a conflict that can be interpersonal, and it what it is is between or among two or more individuals. This concludes this lesson.